Hi everyone, Marker Boy with you again in the workshop out in the woods, off grid. Time once again for a little bit more fun wood turning. And what I'd like to show you today is how one can correct a mistake. It's a mistake that I made a number of years ago. I was just finishing off the turning of a, uh, the inside of a bowl and I burst through the screw holes from the inside that were used to attach the faceplate to the foot of the bowl. I'm going to show you how I used a piece of copper to cover my tracks, as it were. I'm going to start with uh, a two-inch piece, two-inch slab of Gary Oak. It's a species of oak that grows natively on southern Vancouver Island. It's only two inches thick, so we're, it'll, it'll be a shallow, maybe platter type bowl. We're going to pretend that I've made a mistake and I've bored through into the screw holes. And then I'm going to show you what I do with the copper to cover my tracks. So far so good. You never know what you're going to run into with these found pieces of wood. Set up on the lathe here. See how it see how it runs. And the usual wobble and a little bit of vibration, but we'll soon turn that down to size. There, that describes the line, an exact line where I'm going to recess for the face plate. Start the sanding process here, clean things up a little bit. Well, that's looking pretty good. Time to uh, flip the bowl around. Now, that's a little bit slack in there. I've gone a little bit over. So one of the little tricks that I employ to get that centered is to wrap a piece of electrical tape around the outside diameter of the faceplate. Just makes it nice and snug in there. Now, put that right side out on the lathe and so begins the hollowing process. Before I start I would like to know what the overall depth of my project is going to be so I'm just going to put a flat piece of wood across the foot and measure looks like yep we got two inches just as I suspected. So if I hollow to a depth of uh, an inch and a half, it means I'm likely, to, I'm going to miss those screws that I just put in from the faceplate end. And as I mentioned earlier, that was my mistake a long time ago, was that I gouged out too much of the bowl and I blasted through into the screws on the faceplate. And I remember being rather upset at the time. Uh, just have a, a quick depth check to see how I'm doing here. And it looks like I'm at an inch and a quarter already. And if you remember, I said uh, maximum inch and a half on this bowl, this platter. So I'm not far off. So we'll just carry on developing the form here and see what happens.
Now I'm going to do a little bit of work on the outside of the rim. What I thought would look okay would be a couple of grooves on the outside just to add a little bit of interest. Not forgetting that the primary focus, as you'll see in a little while, is going to be what's happening right in the center here. Let's assume that I did actually blast through the bottom of my bowl. We would see and be intensely annoyed because we'd have screw holes showing approximately like so. And what to do? So what I came up with, and again, it's perhaps it's not particularly original, is I decided I'd, I'd clean up the mess and leave a sharp circular line just to a, a fairly shallow depth. And then we're going to insert a piece of hand-beaten copper into there to provide some, well, it's a cover-up is what it is, <laughs> but um, it adds considerable vi visual interest to the center of the bowl, as I hope you will agree. Now, I've got my area of interest defined here, and we're going to set about preparing the copper ready to insert into that space. Doesn't really matter about the diameter because we're gonna make the copper fit that space exactly. Some of you may have worked with copper. One of the characteristics of copper, along with some other metals, silver in particular, as you work them, they, uh, uh, what's called, they work harden. The way we soften it is simply to anneal it. And right now, the best way of doing that is to heat it to red heat in the fire, quench it just to cool it down, and then we can start the, the beating process with the ball peen hammer. And copper conducts electricity, and uh, electricity conducts heat fantastically well. So it's not going to take too long to get the desired result. Our copper sheet is now at a, a nice cherry red shade, and we can quench it in the water. You can be careful, you don't want to get steam all over your hands. Almost instant cooling there. Not quite. And the copper is incredibly soft after such treatment. Beautiful colors on the back of the copper there. Simply put, we just beat a nice design into it right now. While the copper is soft, I'm just going to flatten it out. Look for a halfway attractive, halfway attractive area here. There, that's the disc, pretty well cut to size, as good as I can get it with the, the snips. So now I'm going to take a file and trim the flat edges exactly to the scribed line. Now I've got it cut to the size that I need, just a tiny fraction oversize in the hole that I cut in the bottom of the bowl. So in order to shrink the diameter slightly, what I've done is I put it over the top of this coffee can, got it centered, and just dished it ever so slightly. Copper's really soft, don't need to tap very hard. And that, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, that just turns it into more of a saucer shape. And you'll see why in a second. Now I'd be lying if I told you this was the first fit. I've test fitted it quickly already for everybody's benefit, including my own. And I know that this is going to be a really tight fit in the wood there. And then I reverse the process that I just used to create the saucer shape. And I gently, making sure that all of the edges are contained, I gently 
just reverse the dish on the copper. So as part of the final sanding, we take off any rough edge that remains from the tin snips or the file around the outside of the copper and we buff the highlights of the copper to give it more impact. It'll jump out of the bottom of the bowl. So we've turned what uh, otherwise was a fairly nondescript bowl in terms of figure. We've created a focus for the bottom of the bowl. Now comes the moment that, I don't know about you, but I've been waiting for. I'm going to apply some wax and see what the final result looks like. work the wax in till the wood won't easily soak up anymore and leave it for a minute or two play with it with my bare fingers those feel so nice and then we'll give it a final buffing and the job's done so there we have it uh, we've turned what would otherwise have been a, a fairly nondescript piece of hardwood, in terms of figure at any rate, into something that has a, a focus, something a little bit different, very arts and craftsy, if I may say so myself, and all as a result of a mistake that I made a few years ago when I plowed through into the screw holes in the bottom of the bowl. Now we don't have to do that. We did this on purpose. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Click on the button that'll appear at the end of the video and join all my other subscribers. I hope you all enjoyed the show. Thanks once again for watching. I really enjoy hearing from you all with your comments and questions. So keep them coming and we'll see you next time.